Today's video will delve into the upcoming changes to the AI systems in Grand Theft Auto 6 by Rockstar. We'll explore a patent that introduces a groundbreaking system unprecedented in gaming, promising a revolutionary shift in how AI operates within games. Additionally, we'll delve into other intricacies concerning AI and non-playable characters in GTA 6, including insights from a job listing at Rockstar's new LA studio, shedding light on NPC dialogue. We'll also examine NPC behaviors in response to their environment and their integration with social media, enhancing immersion and complexity in player interactions. Let's kick off with Rockstar's innovative AI system set to debut in Grand Theft Auto 6. Described by Rockstar as the most significant and immersive evolution of the series, the emphasis on immersion is evident in their patent filings. We'll focus on one particularly intriguing patent, unveiling a new system poised to revolutionize AI in gaming. Considering Rockstar's commitment to delivering the most immersive experience yet, it's evident that NPCs and AI will play pivotal roles. This patent specifically pertains to animations in GTA 6, aptly named System and Method for Virtual Character Locomotion. Back in 2020, Rockstar Games unveiled an innovative system that will debut in GTA 6. Now the details might sound a bit complex, but essentially, this patent outlines a fresh approach to animating characters and imbuing them with dynamic intelligence. These characters will now possess a kind of virtual brain, allowing them to react to their environment, other NPCs, weather, and even their mood, influencing their animations on the fly. Before this advancement, each character's animation had to be painstakingly recorded in a studio equipped with motion capture technology. This process involved attaching markers to actors' suits and compiling animations into what's called an animation tree. This method was resource-intensive, limiting the variety of animations Rockstar could include in their games. For instance, in GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2, each NPC had its own animation tree, containing all their actions. Animation trees essentially stack animations, blending them together seamlessly and transitioning between them based based on player input and in-game conditions. Additionally, motion matching, a feature seen in GTA 5 and RDR 2, automatically selects animations based on player actions and the surrounding environment. This results in fluid and lifelike character movements, such as running while shooting, creating a more immersive experience for players. With GTA 6, Rockstar introduces an innovative system designed to optimize resources and streamline animation data. This approach allows for more content within the game while offering a broader array of animations. It shares similarities with motion matching but diverges in its utilization of a new framework. Rather than relying on conventional animation trees, character animations will be predominantly data-driven, adapting dynamically to environmental cues. These animations will be categorized into distinct motion types, representing unique character styles. Each character will possess a designated motion type, enhancing the depth and realism of their movements. As an illustration, let's consider various states such as tired, injured, and normal, each corresponding to a set of animations. Additionally, every character will possess their own blackboard, a virtual representation of their current state and surroundings. This blackboard stores crucial data including the character's condition, location, weather, temperature, and more. Utilizing this information, the game's code dynamically selects appropriate animations or styles for the character, enhancing their responsiveness to the virtual world. For instance, in the Ocean Drive scene from the trailer, we observe a character seated on the sidewalk. As a group of NPCs pass by, he attentively observes them, reacting accordingly to their presence. With this system, the gameplay experience is poised to become even more immersive. It will prioritize environmental data, including the presence of other NPCs and vehicles, alongside factors influencing the character's mood. Consequently, NPCs will exhibit previously unseen levels of reactivity, shifting focus to a noteworthy job listing from Rockstar's recruitment opportunities. Last year, Rockstar opened a new studio in Los Angeles, from what we know, it's purely a new motion capture studio, so they have another one besides the one in New York, mainly to record NPC dialogue probably. This discovery confirms that. I checked Rockstar's careers page just now, and there's a job offer at Rockstar LA for associate writer pedestrian and ambient dialogue. This could indicate that they are still writing and recording GTA 6 NPC dialogue right now. This suggests that the development team is currently engaged in scripting and recording NPC dialogue for GTA 6. You can find the specific responsibilities outlined in the job description provided. It says, write funny, character-driven, and unique dialogue for our ambient population. Work with key stakeholders to understand and support the technical requirements for player-led, dialogue-based interactions with our ambient population. Provide exciting dialogue that works within the strict constraints of a complex game system. Undertake self-motivated research and leverage that research to enrich your writing. 
understand and match the tone of our games. This underscores the commitment of Rockstar to ensuring that GTA 6 remains true to its franchise roots. Aligning NPC dialogue with the established GTA universe bodes well for the game's authenticity. Shifting gears to another aspect related to NPCs, let's delve into how they'll integrate with social media. Not only will NPCs exhibit more lifelike behaviors and interactions with their surroundings, but they'll also engage with social media platforms, a novel addition to Grand Theft Auto 6. Here's a rundown of the phones observed. NPCs will be equipped with various phone models, as evident from both images and the trailer. Notably, NPCs will actively engage with their phones, which boast fully functional cameras and displays, an improvement over GTA V. For instance, in a scene from the trailer set on Ocean Drive, an NPC can be observed capturing photos or videos with their phone. The displayed imagery accurately reflects the NPC's point of view, suggesting the possibility for NPCs to record and share in-game content on the virtual social media platforms. Let's delve into an intriguing Reddit post that delves into this aspect further. Here's why NPC recorded TikToks aren't as far-fetched as you think. A common speculation point I see on this subreddit is the potential for NPC recorded TikToks for the game's social media that was teased in the trailer. Like someone filming you commit a crime and you later seeing that post online. Many have dismissed this as far-fetched in terms of development complexity, but I wanted to discuss why it's plausible. Firstly, I think we've already seen a system that could serve as a base for building a TikTok-like system, the Instant Replay, Rockstar Editor from GTA 5. Given this game is more of a sandbox with physics rather than a competitive shooter, where replay systems are typically seen, it's even more impressive to consider this system in GTA 5. It accurately records and replays events just as they happened, with every car, ragdoll, etc. Moving just as it did originally in the moment. The tech behind this isn't actually recording like a camera and replaying, it's really just recreating it, which again makes it impressive how much time Rockstar put into it, making it accurate. To me, this feels like what could be used as a base for a system where NPCs record their own videos from their perspective. This next thing is something I could have sworn I remember hearing long ago, but can't seem to find, and was hoping someone on here remembers too. Back before GTA 5's launch, there were details revealed through various interviews, magazines, etc., and I remember hearing or reading something about being able to watch your own crimes on Weasel News on the TV. This obviously didn't end up in the game, but there is a slight remnant of it in GTA Online. Am I the only one who remembers this being mentioned for single player though? Maybe my mind is playing tricks on me. Anyways, this last point is actually from the trailer. At the 033 mark, in this scene we see a lot of NPCs hanging out on a busy street, and one NPC in particular recording on his phone. As we know Rockstar's trailers are always all in engine, no CGI cinematics, so I think it's worth noting that it looks as if his screen is accurately showing what he's looking at. My screenshot is zoomed in, but if you got hat mark on the trailer, you can see it matches up to what he's looking up at. Could this be a hint towards said system, or just a nice detail? Rockstar has a reputation for delivering what they showcase in their trailers, often exceeding expectations. Their dedication to enhancing NPC interactions in GTA 6 underscores their commitment to creating a vibrant and authentic game world. There's been a lot of talk since GTA 6 was announced, with rumors flying all over. But hey, here's a rundown of confirmed stuff like vehicles, items, weapons, and features for the game. Now, the official release of the game is still a good few years away. Rockstar Games is really putting in the work to make this game top-notch. But thanks to a leak, we've got some inside info. We're talking cars, new physics, main characters like Lucia and Jason, map locations, a massive open world, tons of stuff to do in-game, and a bunch of weapons you'll get to use. We've also learned about better AI for non-player characters, some RPG elements, and cool new gameplay features. All this has got the gaming community buzzing about what GTA 6 will bring when it finally drops. Let's dive into the primary video clips, making rounds on social platforms, showcasing mission gameplay, and offering insights into Rockstar Games' vision for GTA 6. Among the widely shared footage is a mission featuring Lucia, the game's playable character, and a Latina protagonist attempting to rob Hank's Waffles, a diner. During this early test phase, the non-player characters lack distinct facial features and bear a dummy-like appearance, humorously dubbed in-game as such. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. The NPC's responses are influenced by Lucia's aggressive actions, with various animations depicting the fear evoked by the robbery, akin to the dynamic NPC reactions seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. In the diner heist, Lucia has the option to aim her handgun at a hostage, providing players the choice to either rob or engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Managing the hostage adds depth to criminal activities in the game. Jason, the white male protagonist, is also involved in the robbery, allowing players to interact with both characters during the encounter. Jason 
urges Lucia to act swiftly and escape without a trace, hinting at a relationship reminiscent of Bonnie and Clyde, aligning with previous leaks regarding the game's storyline. The character's appearance bears similarities to actors Eva Mendes and Ryan Gosling from The Place Beyond the Pines, though it remains uncertain if the narrative will mirror the movie's plot. Lucia and Jason appear to be in their late 20s, and the game incorporates a character-switching mechanism seamlessly activated through the controller's D-pad. As the police arrive, Lucia can menace another hostage, leading to a showdown with law enforcement outside. The the intricate design of the outdoor area suggests a setting modeled after northern Florida, characterized by lush vegetation. As Lucia and Jason make their getaway, they rack up two wanted stars but avoid a shootout, deftly maneuvering around parked cars before commandeering a police cruiser. This early mission stage is apparent with tutorial-like cues, one highlighting improvements in police AI, where law enforcement remembers vehicles linked to illegal actions. The scene wraps up with Lucia driving the police car, Jason reassuring her of their ability to shake off the cops. However, their escape comes to an abrupt halt, with an unintended collision at an outdated car wash. The early footage reveals a minimap reminiscent of Grand Grand Theft Auto 5, with icons possibly denoting missions from unfamiliar characters labeled WM and YJ. As they ascend to the VIP second floor, Dre interacts with DJ Tip, who appears irked by drink delays. A brief spat implies Tip's unpopular status. Dre moves on, and the clip ends. It's important to note that these clips depict early development stages, subject to changes throughout the game's progress. Another intriguing leak spills details on over 500 in-game events, encounters, and Easter eggs. While we can't cover them all, here are a few highlights. Various events like fishing, Satanist houses, backyard wrestling rings, and big cat mansions offer diverse experiences within the game's universe. There's talk of missing tourists, yard sales offering new clothes, an event resembling insurance fraud from Saints Row, a mysterious voice in a storm drain, potentially a nod to Pennywise, a multi-location Bonnie and Clyde mystery, and a workout challenge hinting at the return of fitness activities. Additionally, within Grand Theft Auto 6, players can stumble upon an island camp, DUI tests, UFO sightings, an animal house, a swamp safari, and the prospect of crazy golf gameplay. Based on insights gathered from the GTA forums, GTA 6's open world is estimated to be at least two and a half times larger than GTA 5, providing players with a vast and immersive environment to explore. The game draws inspiration from the successful approach seen in Red Dead Redemption 2, promising a meticulously crafted open world with captivating mysteries that elevate the gaming experience. GTA 6's development footage showcases recognizable real-life locations from Florida, such as the Homestead Miami Speedway, reimagined as the Port Gel Horn Racetrack, along with places like Portofino Tower, Sombrero Key Light, Solar Amphitheater Bayfront Park, and Lone Depot Park. Moreover, the inclusion of the 1000 Museum, a high-rise residential condominium in Miami, demonstrates Rockstar's dedication to detail. A metro map mirroring Miami's real version adds to the immersive nature of the game world. The presence of lush grasslands and vegetation hints at potential expansion into Georgia, although this aspect remains speculative until officially confirmed. The Miami Beach Police Department's resemblance to the Vice City neighborhood police station shows how Rockstar brings creativity into their world designs. Of course, with any early info, we're waiting for official confirmations to see how these elements fit into the final game. Until then, the mystery around Grand Theft Auto 6 will definitely keep fans excited for its release. Now, let's take a look at the primary locations featured in GTA 6. Ambrosia comprises Ambrosia Farms and the Tarmac. Bayside Copperhead, the Everglades, or Grass Rivers, Fairyland, and Fairyland Forest offer distinct settings. The Keys region includes East Key, Low Key, and additional spots like a garage, gas station, and liquor store. Lake Okeechobee encompasses a motel, prison, and racetrack, while Little Haiti, North Beach, and North Miami feature establishments such as gas stations, hideouts, and liquor stores. Port Gellhorn distinguishes itself with detailed spots like an abandoned building, basketball court, beach, bingo hall, bowling alley, car wash, fishing store, fruit stand, gas station, motel, pawn shop, police station, quick shop, raceway, soccer field, and more. Red Hill showcases a forest, South Beach offers a boardwalk, gym, hotel, ocean drive, and park, while South Miami Sundown includes a beach and tarmac. Vice Beach encompasses Vice City suburbs and Washington Beach. Miscellaneous locations such as an abandoned hotel, observatory, fountain of youth, homeless community, Malibu Club, Monument of Leonida, Redneck Yacht Club, Spaceship House, Underwater Research Facility, and Dinosaur World enrich the gaming world. Recent leaks from this week strongly suggest that Alexandra Christina Ekavari might be the voice behind Lucia in Grand Theft Auto 6. Her voice in a demo reel closely matches the leaked clips of Lucia's dialogues, hinting at her likely portrayal of the character. 
Throughout this breakdown, we've covered loads of info about Grand Theft Auto 6, diving into different aspects of the game. It was important to cover everything we know about the game so far, and while we're eagerly waiting for it, it might still be a couple of years before we get our hands on it. Let's kick off by highlighting some cool discoveries from the leaked clips, focusing on new features and gameplay details revealed. In one scene, Jason and his pals are chilling by an in-ground pool in a modest neighborhood, cracking jokes about a parody of social media called Life Invader. Their banter brings in playful references to Jay Norris's demise showcasing that classic Grand Theft Auto humor fans love. Lucia and Jason are shown in animation tests doing different actions like jogging, stopping, and ducking to avoid gunfire. Rockstar's developers also tested vehicle crash physics on an overpass. The highway signs on Interstate 97 mention North Beaches and Lake Leonida, with the current exit leading to Washington Beach. In another interesting scene, Jason finds a shipping container filled with stacks of cash and a motorbike. Various development clips reveal tweaks being made to a vehicle's interior, hinting at potential new designs or customization options for players. Throughout the clips, interactions with NPCs in the open world are demonstrated, including characters taking selfies, which adds depth to the game's environment and immersion. There's a moment where Jason enters a gang member's territory and takes cover behind a truck, showcasing unique animations for characters reacting to being shot. A notable find in the clips is a jetpack, previously leaked by Tom Henderson which is seen inside the Jack of Hearts Club. The game features parody social media logos like Snapchat, Instagram, and Life Invader. Characters also sport different hairstyles, with details like Lucia's visible bra under her shirt, adding realism. A new feature is the ability for players and NPCs to hold their guns sideways during combat, adding a different dimension to fights. Additionally, Jason is seen twirling his rifle in the air, while another character in a parking lot shoots at him with their pistol held sideways. The leaked clips also reveal early police AI testing, with NPCs showing better cover usage in shootouts. There's a scene where Jason holds up a diner worker with an assault rifle, and while there are dialogue options similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, they seem placeholder for now. Also, Jason's new ability to go prone is a fresh addition to the series. There's a scene in a thrift or antique shop that allows for robbery, potentially serving as a spot to sell stolen items, adding depth to the gameplay. Another feature borrowed from Red Dead Redemption 2 is the ability to pick up and carry bodies, which adds complexity to gameplay. Red Dead Redemption 2's influence can be seen in several other aspects of this game too. The game brings in several RPG elements, like managing food, drinks, sweat, fatigue, and even taming animals, giving players a deeper gameplay experience. References to mountain bike ramps and city bike rentals promise enjoyable cycling activities. The leaked clips mention a bunch of weapons, from firearms like pistols, shotguns, and rifles, to unusual ones like golf clubs, baseball bats, and crowbars. Players can also use equipment such as flashlights, binoculars, lockpicks, and more. Additionally, players can stay in motels and hotels, with the Kington Hotel being one of the options. There's even a pool party with live music for players to check out. References to the Everglades and wildlife like alligators, snakes, raccoons, and birds suggest diverse environments to explore. The weapon wheel system, similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, limits the number of weapons and items players can carry. Lucia can carry a loot bag, possibly used for robberies or stealing from different places. The inventory system allows players to carry health kits and other items for temporary boosts and Jason can pick up and drop weapons from his inventory. The clips hint at animations like Overdose, suggesting unique actions or events in the game. There are indications of horses and horse riding mechanics, possibly inspired by Red Dead Redemption 2. The open world is full of accessible places, including motels, metro stations, restaurants, pawn shops, and supermarkets. Little details like grabbing a gumball from a quick shop machine add to the overall vibe. A cool feature is the ability to shoot while swimming, adding a new layer to combat situations. All these diverse and interesting elements together promise an immersive and fun gaming experience in Grand Theft Auto 6. Let's dive into the cars of GTA 6. Shout out to the GTA forums for putting together this info. You can find links below to join the discussions. There's a bunch of confirmed vehicles. We're talking the Blista Compact, Ocelot Locust, and a car that looks like an early 90s Buick Skylark. Then there are some new cars without official names, like a 90s Chevy Caprice, a Chevy Malibu from 2016 onwards, a Chevy Sonic, and a Honda Accord from 2018 to 2022. And you know how Rockstar rolls, they'll give these cars their own funny names like they always do. There's more on the list too. Albany Primo, Benefactor Shafter LWB, a mix of Ford Explorer and Tahoe from the 90s or 2000s, a Toyota RAV4 from 2018 onwards, with a mix of Lexus NX style, and a Mercedes Grill, Pegasi Tauros, a 1980s Jeep CJA Scrambler, a 5th Gen F150, a G20 conversion van, a Brute Camper, Vapid Speedo, HV Mixer, Metro Mover, D-Class Sheriff SUV, Mobatsu Sanchez livery, Nagasaki Street Blazer, a 1970s Ford Ranchero, a 1971 Buick
Buick Estate, an Albany Emperor, D-Class Turbo Sabre, Yoga Classic, The Contender, and Saddler. Moreover, gamers can anticipate a range of vehicles in Grand Theft Auto 6, including the Slam Van Pickup, Bobcat XL, an updated Regina, Alpha, Gauntlet Classic, Moonbeam Helion, Boxville Go Postal, an unidentified Albany vehicle drawing inspiration from a 1959-60 Cadillac, a Rebel, an unknown Asian sedan, a Ferrazzi or Ferrochi, Baller, Novak, Buffalo STX, Alpha and Fudo, a Benson NF890, Buffalo without a sports bumper, and the Stenier and Landstalker. This extensive lineup promises an immersive and varied driving experience for players within the game. What's got you hyped about this game? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We'll delve into the latest iteration of the GTA 6 mapping endeavor. The developers have expanded and refined the GTA 6 map significantly, making it the most comprehensive fan-made project to date. It incorporates all available data from leaks and the initial official trailer. We'll explore the recent updates to the map and conduct a fascinating comparison between the current GTA 6 map and those of previous GTA games. Additionally, we'll examine a fan-created satellite view of the GTA 6 map, along with the inclusion of Tommy Versetti's mansion spotted in the trailer. All of these elements will be discussed in detail throughout this video. Let's kick things off with the GTA 6 mapping project. Changes have been implemented across all regions of the map. To ensure we cover everything comprehensively, we'll begin our tour from the northwest and work our way down, addressing each modification along the journey. Firstly, the map's dimensions have been expanded from 16,000 by 16,000 to 18,000 by 18,000 to accommodate the newly added land mass. Each square on the map measures 500 x 500 meters. Based on the latest estimations, the map will be larger than before, requiring more space to accommodate all its features. Currently, the northern portion of the map remains unknown, which contributes to its perceived size. Hence, the map extends beyond what's visible on the screen. According to rumors, the GTA 6 map is speculated to encompass three major cities. Presently, we're aware of two. Vice City, the largest city, and Port Gorn, which has undergone further expansion in the latest map update. The third location, Yorktown, is anticipated to be modeled after Tampa. Rumors suggest that it could be the third major city featured on the map. However, at present, there's limited information available about it in the leaks. The only indication we have is a sign displaying New York Toon within Port Gorn. Regarding Port Gorn, details are scarce apart from its name and general location. It's positioned north of Fort Killorn and east of Yorktown. Moving on, we encounter Hank Hill, one of the notable elevations in the game. Despite Florida's predominantly flat terrain, Rockstar has incorporated hills sporadically to diversify the landscape. Adjacent to Hank Hill are the Domed Hills, another series of elevated areas. Notably, the border of a river is highlighted in orange, indicating speculative terrain. Nonetheless, it appears to be situated in the vicinity of Red Hill, a small town position near Lake Leonida. The largest body of water, Lake Leonida, sits approximately at the map's midpoint, drawing parallels to Lake Okeechobee in real life. To the north of Lake Leonida lies Fairyland Forest, a wooded area neighboring Fairyland, a playful nod to Disney World. To the east of Lake Leonida, you'll find Ambrosia and Laurel, two additional small towns along with North Beaches. Heading south from Yorktown, we reach Port Gorn, which has undergone expansion westward. The buildings and roads depicted in black and gray correspond to those visible in leaked footage and the trailer. Roads highlighted in red, along with orange borders, remain speculative. However, the port area shows two speculative buildings and a portion of the border that's confirmed. The Bay Area has seen overall enlargement, including modifications to the speculative islands near Port Gorn. Additionally, a newly added section featuring small islands and a confirmed border indicates further expansion. With these developments, Port Gorn's size may rival that of Vice City. It might not match Vice City's scale, but it could rival, if not surpass, GTA 5's Los Santos, which is remarkable, considering it's our second city on the map. Additionally, the confirmed borders of Port Goro have been adjusted based on new evidence. The remaining areas in Port Goro largely remain unchanged. We still have Han Waffles Diner, surrounded by its buildings and structures, along with Port Gorn Motel, Gorn Bluff, the Pawn Shop, Port Gorn Raceway, Port Gorn Airfield, and the United States Prison. Belleville and Iconfina remain situated near Vice City. Now, focusing on Vice City itself, much of it retains its layout from the previous map update. We observed the increasing density of the map, particularly with the stockyard and crossdown area now filled in, along with the hotels in the Vice Beach area. The proximity of the buildings to one another is quite striking. Additionally, the buildings on Pelican Harbor Island 
remain consistent with the previous update. However, there's been a recent discovery. I'd appreciate your thoughts on this matter in the comments below, as it could potentially be significant if confirmed. According to this viewer, they claim to have identified Tommy Versetti's mansion in the trailer. They're referring to this specific mansion, situated on the Middle Island, directly behind the enormous yacht. It bears a striking resemblance to his iconic abode, raising the possibility that it could indeed be the one. However, it's challenging to make a definitive judgment, since it's nighttime in the footage. It could simply resemble it, but it's difficult to confirm. Nevertheless, it would be fantastic if it indeed makes a return in the game. The recent update brought significant changes to Vice City, particularly with the Vice City port. This is where the scene featuring the bolt shot from the trailer takes place. Now, we have a clearer understanding of its entire border, with some buildings identified. There are two speculative buildings, along with some confirmed ones. The bridges have been updated, and there have been adjustments to the speculated Ryaway. Furthermore, the FLP Solar Amphitheater has been relocated northward based on new evidence. The Vice City International Airport Metro Station has also undergone updates, aligning with new information from leaks. Notably, the airport now appears more complete, with an additional hangar. These encompass all the changes made to Vice City. Now let's shift our focus to the Grass Rivers, as they've also received updates. The speculative landmass along the west coast has been adjusted to accommodate the map expansion. Notably, the Lake SLW Waterway now connects to the Grass Rivers, providing insight into the potential appearance of this swampy region on the map. A scene from the trailer showcased the Airbolt, a vehicle likely used for traversing these areas. Hamlet remains in its original position, serving as a parody of Homestead. It's interesting to note the location of the Shaka Shed, situated in the middle of the Grass Rivers, reminiscent of the shack seen in Lemoyne in Red Dead Redemption 2. This suggests that this area may draw inspiration from its counterpart. Furthermore, I anticipate hunting to be quite intense in this region, given the presence of alligators, snakes, and lizards. The diverse wildlife, particularly at night, is bound to create a thrilling atmosphere. Additionally, changes have been made to the Gator Keys and the surrounding islands, as observed in the trailer. More specifically, there have been additions to speculative locations, such as Bird Key, based on new evidence. Additionally, some speculative areas across the map have been updated. That wraps up the analysis of the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. It'll be intriguing to see how closely it aligns with the actual map. Moreover, let's delve into a fascinating comparison between this latest version and all the other maps in the GTA series. Take a look at this comparison. On the left side, you'll find the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. Above it, there's the map of North Yankton from GTA 5. To the right of the North Yankton map, you'll see the island of Copico from GTA Online. Next to Copico, there's the GTA 5 map. Below that, we have the GTA 4 map. Below the GTA 4 map are the maps of Liberty City and GTA 3. And finally, at the bottom, there's the map of GTA San Andreas. One of the first things I noticed is how compact the GTA 4 map appears compared to others. Despite its small size, it boasted greater density than the GTA V map. Streets were closely packed, and every inch of space was utilized efficiently. Anyone who's played GTA 4 can attest to the unparalleled density of its city, brimming with intricate details. I anticipate a similar level of density and attention to detail in the GTA 6 map. Considering the vastness of the GTA 4 map, despite its modest size, I expect the density in GTA 6 to match, if not surpass, that level. Even though GTA 6 is already approximately twice the size of the GTA 5 map, the addition of intricate details will make it feel even more expansive. Now, let's examine a comparison between the old GTA Vice City map and the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. The old Vice City map has been superimposed onto the new one, allowing for a visual comparison of the two. What caught my attention was the size of the GTA Vice City map, which is quite substantial. However, in GTA 6, improvements are expected across the board. There will be more buildings, positioned closer together, enhancing the overall design and creating a denser environment. I also wanted to discuss a map that's been generating a lot of buzz within the community. Someone utilized images from Google Maps to supplement the mapping project. This method offers a clearer perspective on how the game's environment might appear in terms of scale and layout. While this representation may exaggerate the city's size with an abundance of buildings, it provides insights into the length and layout of highways, which have been overlaid with speculative areas. Additionally, looking at Yorktown, despite the lack of details, its size hints at the potential scale of both Yorktown and Port Gorn. Furthermore, the top portion of the map may resemble the depiction, although details remain uncertain. 
Considering the vast array of features such as multiple airports, cities, small towns, mountains, hills and swamps, it's evident that GTA 6's map is poised to be the most impressive in the series. The GTA 6 community has just found some major clues left by Rockstar Games, and it was under our nose the whole time. GTA 6's Trailer 1 revealed a ton of new things about the game off the bat, but recently, there's been even more developments that show off the GTA 6 main character story, Lucia. We learn a bunch of new things about her background, so if you're not interested in potential spoilers, this may not be the video for you. This information is directly from Rockstar Games, so this is the real deal. So getting into the details of Lucia's jail cell, let's focus on those newspaper clippings. I'll do my best to zoom in and enhance the image, but there are two distinct white clippings with black text. One of them appears to have a portrait, and I can only speculate that it might resemble a modern-day wanted poster. This could be showcasing the story of Lucia's alleged crime, accompanied by an image like a visual representation of what she's accused of. It's almost akin to a wanted picture that you'd find in a newspaper. This phenomenon isn't unheard of in real life. When people do something noteworthy or newsworthy, it's not uncommon for them to keep a record of it, like an article, and put it up on their wall as a sort of memento. It's like a snapshot of a moment in their life, even if it involves legal trouble. So Lucia might be preserving this particular newspaper clipping as a piece of her history, whether it's for sentimental reasons, or perhaps as a reminder of the circumstances that led to her incarceration. Now let's broaden the scope a bit and draw comparisons to previous GTA protagonists. Take Michael DeSanta, for instance. His mansion has family photos on the walls. Franklin Clinton's house features similar personal touches. Even Trevor Phillips, in his trailer, has pictures that tell a story about his life. It's not just confined to the HD era. Even in the 3D era games, characters had their own way of leaving traces of their lives in their living spaces. This inclination to personalize living spaces is fascinating. In Lucia's case, the jail cell is an unexpected canvas for her personal story. It makes you wonder about her background, the choices she made, and the events that led her to that cell. Exploring these details could give us a deeper understanding of who she is and why she's in the predicament we find her in. Considering Lucia's attachment to those newspaper clippings, it raises interesting questions about her attitude towards her crimes. Perhaps she finds a sense of pride or even enjoys the bit of notoriety or fame she's garnered from her actions. Keeping those clippings might be her way of cherishing the attention or recognition she's received. The prospect of spending a substantial amount of time in prison also suggests that it could involve more than just a brief cutscene, but potentially a series of missions within the jail environment. Now, shifting our attention to the picture above the bunk bed, it's a bit of a visual puzzle. While it's challenging to discern details, on the left side, there's a guy with a drink in hand, donning a white t-shirt. Next to him is a woman with voluminous hair, and in the foreground, there's another figure. This composition raises the question of whether these individuals could be Lucia's family. The dynamics and connections between characters are often crucial in unraveling the narrative of any GTA game. Acknowledging my limited knowledge about jail life, it's uncertain whether inmates generally have the privilege of keeping photographs with them as mementos. However, in this specific scenario, it appears that Lucia can. This might imply that the prison depicted isn't a maximum security facility, given the freedom for inmates to keep personal items. While the setting is far from casual, it offers a level of interaction and mobility, allowing inmates to go outside, engage in conversations, sit at tables, and soak in sunlight. The orange jumpsuits signify their status, but the absence of being handcuffed to the ground suggests a certain level of relative freedom. In this context, the allowance of pictures and photographs could offer an additional layer of insight into the characters and their personal connections, providing players with a unique perspective on Lucia's life both inside and outside the jail cell. Taking a closer look at the latest image, which I've adjusted to bring out more details, there's another intriguing photograph. A guy in an orange shirt catches the eye, positioned alongside two women on the right. The one on the left appears to be sporting a hat and sunglasses, although discerning whether any of them is Lucia remains challenging. They could very well be family members, close friends, or simply individuals from her social circle. Amidst all the uncertainty, Lucia seems notably fixated on reflecting upon her actions and the community's response. Beyond this, it's evident that Lucia maintains a distinct connection with a specific group of people, as indicated by the presence of their pictures in her jail cell. It's not just about her individual experience. There's a shared history captured in those photographs, hinting at relationships that go beyond the confines of the jail cell. Directly below the image featuring the guy in the orange shirt and the other girls, there's yet another photograph. 
Although the details are obscured, the presence of someone standing in the picture is noticeable. Lucia is seemingly constructing a collage of photos, creating a visual narrative that serves as a repository of memories. These images might play a crucial role in not only grounding her within the context of her relationships, but also providing a semblance of continuity and connection to the outside world. It's worth mentioning that the footage I'm working with is the highest quality version sourced from YouTube, as Rockstar hasn't officially released it on their Newswire page. Despite being in 4K, the YouTube upload might introduce some compromises in image quality, so there could be nuances in the pictures that we might miss. Once Rockstar throws the official trailer our way, we're likely to get a treasure trove of additional details. But for now, let's roll up our sleeves and dissect the snapshots from Lucia's jail cell. Apart from Jason, there's another player in Lucia's story. Stephanie, the Leonid Department of Corrections representative. Picture a different scene, though. Lucia's cell is a far cry from Stephanie's office. In this particular shot, Stephanie's unmistakably holding down the fort in a black dress, center stage on the right. Flip to the left frame, and there she is again, donning a red dress on the right side. Behind her, there's a framed message teasing with, if you miss, but the rest remains a mystery due to some pesky screen glare. Now, let's make a full turn, and voila, another Stephanie pick in the bottom right corner. This time, the backdrop suggests a domestic scene, perhaps with a partner. She's got on some bluish shades, slightly different from what we catch a glimpse of later. The background paints a more vivid picture, a collection of books, pamphlets, a conspicuous high visibility vest, and yet another potential newspaper clipping. Whether it's a routine thing or an anomaly, the jury's still out. So, what's the inside scoop on Lucia's backstory gleaned from her jail cell environment? Well, the state of the jail suggests it's seen better days. Peeling bits off the windows, hint at a place with some history, that initial shot with the barbed wire strongly implies it's not a newly minted spot. It's got the wear and tear of time etched into its surroundings. As we immerse ourselves in the intricacies of Lucia's life within the jail cell, the narrative unfolds as a captivating tapestry, each element contributing to the rich story. The subtleties, from the cryptic newspaper clippings, shedding light on her alleged crimes to the carefully chosen photographs, depicting relationships with family and friends, create a vivid and compelling portrait of Lucia's existence, both within and beyond the jail confines. The personal touches within her confined space evoke a rawness that harks back to the legacy of previous GTA protagonists. Lucia's jail cell, unexpectedly, becomes a canvas revealing a story that transcends the conventional GTA narrative. It prompts curiosity about her past, the decisions that led her to incarceration, and the intricate web of relationships that define her. The permission granted for personal items like photographs in the jail cell adds an intriguing layer to the storytelling, suggesting a nuanced sense of freedom within the constraints of imprisonment. Lucia's attachment to these items, whether they be newspaper clippings or family snapshots, beckons players to ponder her perspective on her own actions and the recognition she may have garnered. While we eagerly await the official trailer release from Rockstar, it is clear that Lucia's story is woven with complexities and mysteries that leave us yearning for more. The weathered appearance of the jail environment, with peeling bits off the windows and subtle signs of aging, hints at a setting steeped in history, amplifying the anticipation for the unfolding narrative. Thus, with these glimpses into Lucia's world, we find ourselves surrounded by a plethora of unanswered questions. When did she find herself behind bars? And what duration does her stay entail? Your insights are eagerly awaited in the comment section. If this exploration into Lucia's jail cell has piqued your interest, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. Comment down below what you believe caused Lucia to go to jail. And did you spot these hidden Easter eggs in the trailer on your first watch? I'm interested to hear back from you guys. Thank you for watching. If you would like to support our analysis content on GTA 6, make sure to subscribe and leave a like.